Onivia, League of Legends highlights. I, I think they're just thinking about their own composition, which is just, you know, mainly going to go straight forward at the enemy team and try to engage. But as you did mention, I mean, Gen G do have a lot of tools to handle that engage. We'll have to wait and he see. He loses this fight. If this goes badly, he loses his whole jungle. It's a three on three. Clint is getting in there. They're trying to burst down Krakow, but he gets the smite down. And there it is. The set comes in with the face breaker. And now BDD's in the back line with no dash, no flash, no ability to get away from this one. Fate will go down. It's two for two so far as the two top laners are going to survive. Rascal's got double buff, though. As the sun will come in, the final cue might be the execution, and there it is. It will be in favor of Gen G, who take down three. the jungle, but it's actually Sting a camp ahead himself now. But uh oh, uh -oh. that's the cue landing, and Rascal takes an extra shot, but he's four and zero now. As Summit saw it coming, but he was not willing to give up the farm. Oh, this is so greedy! This is gonna come down to the spite. As down goes the rumble. He doesn't smite the dragon, and Glid is easily able to take down this objective. Genji are getting the last auto is not enough, and now we have a bear on the bottom side. It's a lot of burst damage that comes in, eats a rocket to the face of Prince as well, and that bear will not be denied. How about another kill going the way of Glid as he picks up his third of the game? Yeah, just a miscalculation. Sin has the biggest lead up in the top side, so pretty much everything is going well for Genji here. The mid lane is ahead on CS, so is the bottom lane. And Liv Sandbox, they're just going to try to make a play here on the BDD. They have just immediate CC chain that comes in, and there is no escape for BDD. He's not. It's hard to say. He wasn't able to do so. He's still holding on to his flash now. Oh, boy. Summon is still taking these trades. The Dominus comes in, and he's getting in there. He thinks he can take the win, and actually flash used by Rascal, and that's just the kill. If the Renekton is not able to lock down. You can see this is extremely desperate. Um, he uh, does have teleport, but like, do you want to do this? Like, yeah, what's I mean, Croco doing? This where? Like, he's not teleporting. What are you doing, man? Yeah, uh, you're dead. Easily reads that. Yeah, he gets away. Set set was coming up, and I think even seen uh -oh. like a forward. As we do have the teleports coming in, trying to now get on top of everybody. Charm onto three, but effort is so squishy. And there's five members of Gen Z down on the bottom side. So your teleport. Is not really going to find too much value here out of both Fate and Summit, actually. As the Q from the Lee Sin is going to miss. They're trying to trade back a little bit, but this is Gen G's Rift. They're ahead five and a half thousand gold and at 11 minutes in. Ruler's just getting more gold here on this turret. Plate's going down. He gets 160 off this one solo by himself. And now they've got the Drake prior that comes with it. They get the Drake. And like you can have your fun in the mid lane, but I am just going to head towards my late game Jinx early. All right, they're pretty desperate now, trying to find any engage they can. The quickness is used, but he is not able to chain that onto anything. The equalizer doesn't slow anyone for a significant amount of time. That was the first Herald, by the way. I said second. I lied. But uh, <laughs> felt like we were. It was a pretty late Herald take considering the state yeah. of the game. So I thought it was second, but it's not, of course. Genji was just collecting all the free Live Sandbox kills instead. Oh, just barely misses the plates. Yeah. Sad times. Well, never never felt sadder watching Lions disappear on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> Can't always get what you want. And Ruler, he he now can basically do whatever he wants. I mean, I mean, Genji at this point are just playing with Live Sandbox like they're a bunch of toy cars or something. And yeah, we talked about it was just about everything else. And yeah, I don't think the draft even matters at all. Yeah, in this one just comes down to the fights here as Rascal is going to get caught out here, but maybe he can still get the assassination tries to jump in, but they're stacking pretty well as fate now not able to get the kill. Maybe Prince can do it. Can anyone kill this guy? The rocket comes in and actually gets him <laughs> threads the needle through two members of Live Sandbox, and it's a trade. What will be the soul point here for Gen.G on Infernal Soul. Infernal Soul with a Jinx game. I just want to go on to game three. This, you have a similar feeling as Gen.G too. You're like, okay, well, this I just want to move on because this game is already over, and you know, Rascal's just devil may care attitude in this game has been pretty fun to watch. One of those games where it's just like, okay, if this were a scrim, it's like, go next. Oh yeah, you just quit the game, yeah. 100%. It's like, okay, good, good job, guys. You guys won the early game really hard. Uh, we're, we're not going to play it out from behind, unless they're specifically trying to practice that. But at this point, it is a pretty large lead. Yes, it might be in this case. My client in English recently, so don't remember, but... You know, it's... Uh, 
I'm trying to think of a way where this goes well for Liv Sandbox or how Gen.G could mess this up because this is like an even bigger lead than when Liv Sandbox beat T1, right? When they came back and had the Bane fight. Like, yeah. they had a Bane in that game. So you're like, oh, okay, well, Bane kind of fed some items. This is a pretty early Baron. We'll see how the turn goes. Again, Liv Sandbox is engaged. It's really nice. The Equalizer does come down. Gen.G, I like that they give respect to this. Yeah. I like that they back off. But Liv Sandbox, they just don't care. They just don't give a damn. They're like, okay, we'll take the Baron. Wait, no, we can't. We can't quite do that. The spike comes in, and they're trying to get it done. But look at BDD. He just does way too much damage. Prince gets one kill, but that's it. He's able to avoid the rocket. And you got to live, live sandbox sometimes, even when they're getting crushed. They never back down. They don't just let them slow push <laughs> up. But this all soul. Soul on top of it all. Very fiery cherry. You know, on top of this uh, uh -huh. victory that Genji are... Already, I mean, yeah. we'll see if uh, oh, yep, there's fate. a deeper one. They go for it. Fate is going to go for it. Yep. And so here we go. They see him coming in now. The equalizer is really nice. And we'll see if he can get the angle. Trying to get on top of the Tom Kent as well. Effort just dies immediately. And now fate will go in, but the damage is not quite there. As Krakow is trying to follow up on that. And here comes Clid and Rascal looking to get it. I think he just spited him to death there. That is going to be the clean ace and should be the end here of game number two. It almost once once again went all back to the set, but <laughs> this is yeah. one of those games where set's win rate's going to go down a little bit, but it wasn't about him, and Gen.G just played a fantastic early game. Clid really started to snowball things when he got those three kills, when he was able to get the first kill uh, there in the jungle, and then those two uh. on the bottom side. What? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Did he try to walk across and he was actually blocked by his teammate or something? That looks pretty weird. Either I way, guess so. <laughs> either way, ruler with a little celebration, perhaps there.